Hi, and welcome to another video of the Target Individual Program, Target Individual Experience. So let me just get straight into it. Since many people do not want to believe that the government have the ability to control people's mind and that they are influenced in such a way that they are thinking, they may have been, their behavior patterns, or a lot of it is driven by mind control and technologies developed to control the minds of human beings. So let's talk about mind control. What is mind control? On the website decisionmakingconfidence.com, mind control is also known as manipulation, thought reform, brainwashing, mental control, coercive persuasion, coercive control, malignant use of a group dynamics, and many others. The fact that there are so many names indicates a lack of agreement with which for confusion and dis distortion, especially by those using it covertly for their own benefit. Let's agree that mind control comes under the umbrella of persuasion and influence. How to change people's beliefs and behavior. Some will argue that everything is manipulation. However, in saying this, important distinctions are lost. It's much more useful to think of influence as a continuum. At one end, we have ethical and respectful influences which respect the individual and his or her rights. On the other end, we have destructive influences which strip the person of the identity, independence, and ability to think critically or logically. It is at this end that we find destructive cults and sects. These groups use deception and mind control tactics to take advantage of the weaknesses as well as the strength of the members or satisfy the needs and desire of the cult leader themselves. A one-on-one -on -one cult is an intimate relationship where one person abuses their power to manipulate and exploit the other. Example, teacher student, therapist client, pastor worshiper, husband wife. This cultic relationship is a version of the larger group and may even and may be even more destructive because all the time and attention is directed towards only one person. Now, as TIs, um, uh, target individual person, this is what happened, except that a lot of the energy or a lot of the time and attention is uh, focused on, you know, a group of people. And again, we're living in a broader society, a broader country, a broader world. So thousands and thousands of people can be uh, manipulated, all right, and can be targeted in such a way that the person feel that they are the only one that's going through this, okay? So what is mind control? It's best to think of it as a system of influences that significantly disrupt an individual at their very core, at the level of their identity, their values, beliefs, preferences, decisions, behaviors, relationships, etc., creating a new pseudo identity, uh, pseudo personality. It can, of course, be used in beneficial ways, for example, with addicts. But here we are talking about situations that are inherently bad or unethical. The psychologist Philip Zambato said that says that mind control is a process by which individuals or collective freedom of choice and action is compromised by agents or agencies that modify or disrupt perception, motivation, affects cognition, and or behavioral outcome. And he suggests that everyone is susceptible to such manipulation. It is not some ancient mystery known to a selected few. It is a combination of words and group pressures packaged in such a way that it allows a manipulator to create dependency in his or her followers, making their decisions for them while allowing them to think that they are independent and free to decide. The person being mind control is not aware of the influence process nor of the changes occurring within themselves. Um, as TIs, we are aware, we become aware, okay, and this, and this is after they have manipulated uh, the target individual in such a way that they believe or they think 
that now we can do it overtly instead of covertly and then try to use certain things within the targeted person pass or what they have set up the targeted individual with to try to blackmail them into silence as well as uh, bringing them into the fold of the cult right or um, giving them money or a good job to buy their silence so we have to be aware of these things okay and not take these things as something that people will say and you know they want to call somebody crazy because they say well you know i'm being manipulated psychologically manipulated right and so again this is part of their condition in terms of the broader society and their belief in that when somebody talks about being mind control is that somehow they're they're crazy okay so we're gonna talk about these things all right so i'm not going to get into the mind control versus brainwashing you guys can read that i already gave you the website besides you can see it here right on the video okay so you guys can go and look on it yourself so let's talk about the grading themes which is one of the weapons that they use against targeted individuals all right this is this is from the website psychologicalharassment.com says how are the grading themes used and how are they used as a threat? The grading themes by themselves can be can have a shocking value or have a lasting effect. It will probably stay in your memory and thoughts for a long time. The way they are used is usually to threaten and humiliate a person and in many cases for both reasons. The way it works is that insinuation will be made that you are a pedophile or a homosexual, for example. And then a threat will be made towards that group. For example, all pedophiles or homosexuals should be killed. So basically, what it adds up to in your mind is uh, that you think that the people making the insinuation think you are a pedophile or a homosexual and that they want to kill you. Given the fact that homosexual is more socially acceptable, pedophilia is usually the one that is used because of the seriousness and hatred towards pedophiles. Different groups can also be used, like ethnics, religion, criminal organization, and nationalities. Strategies and tactics. The way the grading themes are usually used in the workplace. 1. Shock, prep, and smokescreen. Weird comments or discussion about sexuality, for example, will occur that can also have a shock value by themselves. It also used as a prep or smokescreen for what is to come or for what follows. Two, insinuations. An insinuation that you belong to or a part of a selective group will be made. Ambiguous comments are usually used also. Ambiguities are usually used to induce doubt and uncertainty. Indirect threats. A threat will be made towards the selected group, which is an indirect threat towards you. Since you have been led to believe that the person, that the people making those insinuations think you are part of this group. It is a threat aimed at you. The desired result is to make you feel threatened or feared. Threats and fear. Preventing the victim from coming forward and exposing the perpetrators. The victim of these uh, tactics may be reluctant to come forward because the threat was made towards a selective group and not directed to them, at them. They may feel the effect of the threat, but may not understand the psychological manipulation behind them. The victims may not want to come forward when the threat was made towards homosexuals, for example, and that they are unable to explain why they feel or felt threatened. The victim may also believe that they will not be believed or given the fact that the documentation about these psychological technologies do not exist or cannot be found. Psychiatry may also be involved and used as a threat in the same sense of building false profiles for false accusations. Uh, this is something that they've done and i'm going to explain this in this video also as i uh you know talk about my target and, and what's been happening some threats to attack or destabilize a person personally or sensitive information can, personal or sensitive information can also be used to humiliate or threaten a person personal or sensitive information that is shared with a friend or others can be used to humiliate the person when the relationship ends or take a turn for the worse. People can also feel vulnerable 
when they believe that some of their personal or sensitive information may be shared with others. This is also part of a psychological manipulation tactics where the victim is threatened or attacked with subtle remarks to destabilize them. In psychiatry, psychiatry can be used as a threat in the sense of building false profile or to build false profiles to wrongly accuse or convict people of a crime that they did not commit. So, a uh, couple of quest uh, questions and then answers is what are these strangers or auditory hallucinations saying? They are saying that I'm a pedophile, part of a criminal organization, and that I experience great pleasure and joy in killing people. Question, what else are they saying? They keep repeating and saying there is no, that there is a catch. Tell me about your mother. The threat of, the threat of filling up a profile or creating a false profile. Okay, and I'm uh, psychiatry can be used to cover up or hide the use of these psychological manipulation technologies and also to discredit the victim with a false diagnosis or by using the victim's confused state of mind and claims. The sensitive information that is shared with psychiatry that can also be obtained by list with listening devices can also be used to further humiliate and threaten the victim. A user response from psychiatry would be to claim that as more information is shared, more the more the symptoms of mental illness can increase and that these manifestations and symptoms can uh, needs to be controlled with a high doses of medication. And this was, you know, this has happened to me because every time I try to explain uh, about my targeting, okay, uh, <laughs> my psychiatrist at the time would uh, want to give me uh, more up the doses on my medication. Uh, finally, um, I had to, uh, you know, put the brakes on that and uh, after I realized what was being done. And so, you know, just one of those things, okay? Um, I'm not going to get into this, but I just want to put this on here so you guys can read it yourself. You guys can pause the video, talk about the constant state of interrogation, indirect communication, and psychological disorders, right? This is by Ivan Provlov. And the constant state of interrogation, unfinished uh, ambiguities, frustration, and negative condition, uh, condition sound, hidden sounds, and fear conditioning. And this is what um, has been done to me over the past couple of days with airplanes circling, small airplanes circling, uh, sirens. Um, you know, it started like around seven o'clock in the morning. Now it's around, you know, uh, around four o'clock in the morning to five o'clock in the morning. You know, so they just basically shift, right? So once I expose uh, a certain time frame in which they do these type of things, they will stop. And then they will either do it at a later time or at an even earlier time to keep me up. And my neighbors upstairs uh, dropping uh, heavy things on the floor, constantly, constantly, constantly dropping uh, stuff while I'm here. Because I've been home, you know, uh, since me and Pam um, officially disconnect from each other. I wouldn't say break up, we were not in a new relationship, but disconnected from each other because of the, you know, them using her to target me in such a way that um you know i just i just i couldn't deal with it and so you know i left and so i'll explain what it is that they're doing also uh with her um but first i do want to actually let me put it back on this but i do want to get to the video portion of this you know for example this morning i woke up and someone was con constantly bouncing a basketball okay <laughs> from the moment I, I woke up, all right? This is my this is the second time that I woke up after being woken up at 4.50 in the morning because my upstairs neighbor is banging on the floor, okay? Dropping stuff on the floor right up above my head in my bedroom, okay? And uh, and this is after last night I had to go and knock on the door and be like, hey, can you stop, you know, dropping stuff on the floor and banging stuff on the floor? Right, I say it's right above my head in my bedroom, and I'm trying to study. And then I come back down, okay, come back to my apartment, and I go in the kitchen to make me something to eat, and I'm here banging above me in the kitchen. So I know they're using through the wall technology to uh, monitor, you know, where I move or in the house. I can go to the bathroom; the sound will follow me to the bathroom upstairs. You know, and then back into my bedroom as I come back into my bedroom. Right? So, this is something that's constantly being done. Then today also, um, you know, Pam had called me. Okay, now, 
Uh, this morning, I didn't hear any sirens. I got up. I didn't hear any sirens at all. Um, I started to I made breakfast and, you know, sat down and get ready to do my schoolwork. Um, you know, I have a psychology uh, homework that I have to complete. And um, Pam calls me. Now, I I didn't pick up right away because I was doing something. So when I finished doing what I was doing, I called her back, right? Um, so we're talking normally because since we, you know, disconnected from each other, our conversation are very short. But today, she didn't want to get off the phone for whatever reason. And, you know, I can hear, you know, people in the background speaking really, really, really loud, really, really loud, talking about, oh, you know, he's crazy. Oh, he's crazy. Oh, crazy. Oh, this and that. Again, these are indirect uh, threats, again, because of what it is that they're doing. For example, also, as I come out my bedroom to go in the kitchen to make breakfast, my nephew's son um, is in the kitchen, and he hear the bang. And this has been happening to me also, is that whenever time I say something that they don't like, or they're trying to, you know, make some type of insinuation, they'll the person upstairs will bang on the ceiling, on, on the floor, right? So I hear it. Okay, for example, um, if I talk about something like, uh, I may say, um, like I said, the word Pam, right? Go talk about Pam. They'll hear, there'll be a, a banging. And so, you know, I know they're using her in, in a way. Uh, uh, and so it's nothing new to me. But anyway, as I was saying, so I go into the kitchen. My I'm walking to, into the kitchen. My nephew's son, he's there. He's um, on his computer, and he does his hand signal. So I didn't respond. And they say computer. They bang on the door, on the floor. So he um, does a hand signal, and then he takes his thumb and presses against his computer, right, against the, the computer monitor, the screen. Okay, so I didn't make, I didn't respond to that. I, I you know, um, went to the kitchen, came back into my room uh, to get something. Went back into the kitchen. As I'm going back into the kitchen, he puts uh, he does a hand signal with uh, three fingers, right? So basically, he just uh, his hands was on his leg. Then he do back, you know, the three fingers, right? Um, for like, you know, it's just, you can interpret it as white supremacy or West side, you know, that's, that's what they, you know, these signals, right? So that's three, right? And so as he, as he does that, I, um, took my middle finger and I started scratching on my side of my middle finger. And when I did that, now he does four fingers, right? And so I said, okay, this is what they're doing. So we could, again, so it doesn't matter where you go as a guy. If you're in the if you're in your home and there's people around you, they're gonna use these people more and more and more. Just like when I was at Pam's, they will use Pam more and more with me. The kids also, but you know, not so much the kids because um, you know, I don't really pay attention, you know, with the kids because I know they don't know what they're doing. I know it's the technology that's uh, they've been conditioned, right? They've been brainwashing to do these things. So it becomes very difficult because it's Pam, she's an adult. Okay. So anyway, let's go to the video. So uh, Tuesday, I had to go by Pam to set up the kids' computers and um, and tablets so that uh, they could get ready for school. And she came and she picked me up. Okay, and uh, let's go to uh, the video. So she came and she picked me up. So she called me and she was like, "Hey, uh, where you at?" I said, "Um." leaving the house, getting ready to walk to the corner. She's like, okay, I'll be there. Um, she's like, I'm I'm on Albany. So she's like, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll be there soon. So I'm walking up the block, and I see this uh, Jewish woman. And she's, uh, you know, she's standing in front of uh, a house. This is uh, she right here. You see her across the street. Okay. And um, so she was, uh, the houses were after this building at the corner. So she sees me as I get walk as I'm walking to the corner. Then she starts walking to the corner also. So then she starts playing with her hair. So I said, okay, well, this is what they're trying to. They're using her now, you know, to target me. And so I was like, okay, well, you know what I usually do best, which is which is record. 
and so I come to the corner as I have to wait uh, for a ride and so she comes standing over here at the corner too okay <laughs> now let me just pause this now again as just I'll show you guys the scripted uh, this is all scripted okay so as I said okay so <laughs> let's go back from the beginning look at the perp across the street I come to the corner as I have to wait uh, for a ride and so she comes standing over here at the corner too okay so now you're gonna see this cop pulls up right she's a Jewish guy inside he looks over at her <laughs> Okay. Then you see he, he looks over, but they know I'm recording. But he looks over at me. Okay. At this point, right here. Utterly so ridiculous. Right here. Then he touches his head, and then you'll see he pinches his nose. Okay. Literally takes his thumb, press it against his nose. All right. Utterly ridiculous. So now you'll see as she turns and she walks as he drives away. Let's go back slowly because I had to do this, <laughs> you know. So you'll see her raise her middle finger up at me. You see her do the three fingers? <laughs> and three fingers. Mm -hmm. Now you see the guy on the bicycle as he's driving up. Then he's going to do four fingers, so he's going to switch his hands, and right there, see the four fingers? All right. <laughs> okay. Now, as this was going on, the Jewish woman across the street, she turns and she looks at, in the direction of this lady coming down. Okay. All right, so let's go back slightly. So you see here, she's looking at me. All right, let's go back slightly. So she's, she's looking at me at this point. All right. <laughs> Let's go back up a little bit further. Just a little bit further. Okay. <laughs> All right. Let's, let's mute this. Um, so she looks at me. Then she gonna look up as she looks, you know, over at this woman walking down. That's why I turned the phone so I can record who's coming down the street. Okay. All right. Now watch. So now she walks up. She looks over at me, and she starts. She did the. She didn't. It, you, I didn't catch it in the frame, but she put her palm right facing towards me as she wipes her face. Up, you know. All right. See now she's gonna wipe her face. There you go. Turns. Okay. And she goes again and she's looking at me and she's playing right here again. And she basically put her thumb on her lip. Yeah, I'm trying to get a close up shot. Uh, uh, zoom in. And, um,. You'll see her again pacing back and forth. All right. Now, you see how she grabs her shawl that she had. And she they had two fingers, right? So you see her two fingers, kind of like when somebody makes a gun. I talk about these type of threats uh, all the time. But they will do things like that. And, you know, they will mask it because they already know that you have been conditioned, right? The triggers and anchors have already been placed. The subliminal threats has already been placed in your psyche, in my psyche. So now they just, they're not going to do it blatantly because they know that I'm recording. So they go, they do what is called masking, masking it in such a way that is not obvious to everybody else, but it's obvious to me. Okay. Okay. 
now you see her touch her nose with her thumb as her palm is facing towards in my direction all right talk about palm fixation drill okay and there you go again she sticks it out four fingers see that i'm gonna pause it and she had her hand up there for a couple seconds turns around four fingers going back <laughs> you know and this is where pam had pulled up right so that's what happened so the four fingers pam had pulled up so basically trying to send me subliminal message about if that they're going to use pam you know again to again make some false accusation to or use her in talk they've been doing okay like i said you know um she is the head nurse of the pulmonary department uh, she was working at her um you know at the job for about uh, a year before she they gave her that position and uh, which is a good thing which is a good thing but you have to wonder why okay she just started the job there and already she's become head nurse of the, of the uh pulmonary department of that hospital at um uh what's it the hospital in in, in uh park slope uh, uh presbyterian okay so like i said which is a good thing you know she's the mother of my kids and i want to see her do good you know and um but it just shows you how they use money and giving people positions in order to maintain their loyalty and to get them to participate in this right so people are chosen based on whether or not they participate in this program whether they're going to get good jobs or whether they're going to get uh, good things in, in life is going to happen to them, right? Because again, uh, people who are outspoken against, you know, racism, police brutality, stuff like that, you are targeted, we are targeted, you know, and because we don't kiss ass, we, you know, we speak, we want to speak the truth, we want to expose what's going on, and those that are in power do not want the truth to be exposed. So they will suppress those who are trying to expose the truth while uh glorifying and i wouldn't say glorifying but but uh uh given those that cho choose the uh the docile mentality or the one of uh you know uh ignorance right it would give them those type of positions because they can use them as gatekeepers to protect white supremacy and let's not make no mistake about that okay so anyway let's let me get to the next video because then you guys is going to see uh exactly uh we talk about indirect threats okay so again they constantly do this but you know a person like me that have the presence of mind due to many years of being in this program due to research due to um studying psychology so studying psychological tactics that's why you always see me bring up these things right i always talk about the psychology of what is being done because it is important that we understand that many people particularly or many ti's are targeted individuals who do not understand this keep will keep falling into the same traps into the same scenarios because they are ignorant to what's going on and because they're ignorant to what's going on whatever um narrative is being said about the targeted individual you know the community when, when they go to the community with these things then uh the community will constantly and always participate in uh surveilling harassing uh you know all sorts of things whether it be poisoning you or have because they have to set a negative narrative when you know they said that those who control the narrative right those who control the media those who control uh you know uh in, in society will always control the narrative right and so we know that's to be true okay so when they manipulate you without your knowledge without you knowing and understanding what's being done and you behave in a negative fashion it is not your fault it is a psychological technological process that was done to you without your consent and you have no idea because again you cannot identify these sort of subliminal these sort of psychological tactics that is being used against you and so the change of your person changing your personality without your consent you look at kanye west for example you look at uh um people like candace owens people like uh uh um 
what's his name? Uh, ben. Uh, anyway, uh, you know, Thomas uh, Clarence, the Supreme Court Justice, uh, uh, Ben, um, the, the, you know, the new, the, the black doctor, I forgot his last name, but anyway, you guys can, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Um, yeah, and this is what they do, right? And this is what they try to do, this is they try to control me. So, Pam had picked me up, and, you know, we're, we're driving, and, um, she had the GPS on, but yet, she's not following the GPS, she's acting all confused, you know, we get to Empire Boulevard, and, you know, the GPS told her to go to East New York, which is an, another block down. And again, she's been using this route for the past two weeks. So she knows. But because I'm in the car, all of a sudden now she's acting confused. Uh, just as one time we went to the beach, we were in the parking lot, we went to the parking lot. She acted confused. Like she doesn't know how to get up the parking lot. She started driving in the wrong direction, going all over the place. And then, you know, uh, as she's driving, she's looking at certain signs right signs that are put up in the parking lot with her head so she might be turning right she's looking left at the sign which you know which is meant for me to also look and read the signs because again they send in subliminal message right so um so anyway like i said so she so the gps said to go to east new york she turns on empire boulevard then she turns down on uh she made the left onto utica avenue which and then i had to make another right onto um remsen where she, if she would have went to East New York, East New York, she would have made the right, and then it would have just lead straight into Remsen. But no, the reason why she didn't do that is because, again, they have this scenario all set up to be played out. So as she's coming down, I see these, uh, you know, cops standing over there. They, they are stopping this vehicle. And again, this is Wall Street Theater. Right, so they have to be in a position where I can see. Had she take East New York, we would have drove by, you know, straight, uh, across and you know, I wouldn't see them because again, my head would be turning to the right. My head would be going to the right. Okay, so I would not be turning. But she had to come down this way because again, this is a straight, direct view of the two police officers that had stopped uh, this vehicle. Now, as we're driving as she turns one of the police officer puts his hands behind his head as if you know like what they do how they sweep their hand behind their head right and it's the one that's standing in the street right the other one standing on the sidewalk now as we drive by he's looking the other direction of traffic then he turns right uh let's go back uh let's see I don't know if I can pause it so you guys can see. And it's very difficult to, um, because again, it was very fast. It was very, very quick because as soon as uh, she made that right onto the avenue, the right was um, green. The other right was, the other light was green to her to turn and make the right onto Remsen. So it was very quick. So he turns. Um, so at this point, see, I don't know if you guys may not be able to see, but his hands is up. If you look on the left side of the one standing in front of the uh, street, his you see his, the dark, uh, uniform here his hands is up behind his head okay and then the one that's standing on the sidewalk he turns and then he looks at me right now after we drove past um, those two officers you know I had stopped the video then Pam started doing hand signals to me right she started doing these hand signals and stuff like that uh then um there were people driving in cars that was you know closing their mouth right so they were doing that whole uh, falling their lip inwards, closing their mouth, and, you know, again, trying to shut me up, again, trying to tell me that they're going to use her, right, to accuse me of whatever, or whatever. and, you know, again, you know, money is a powerful thing, they will always use money, and giving her that position, um, you know, is enough, because, listen, she doesn't want to be jobless or, you know, in a, in a less paying job, right because of her financial situation so this is how they manipulate people they understand they know about your financial situation they'll come they'll manipulate you they'll 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 uh give you a job give you a high paying job what have you and and whether you deserve it or not it doesn't matter okay because to them it's about uh you know your loyalty towards them right kind of what cult leaders do right so they use various manipulative tactics this is what the u.s government does and white supremacists right so, you know, this is this is what was going on, okay. 
And so it's not surprising that she would be involved. So like I said, when she called me today and I called her back, you know, she was basically, you know, usually she's like, okay, bye, Harry, because, you know, keep it short, right? But today she was, you know, she she took me, uh, she was on the phone, you know, um, and was like talking to me, you know, she's going over the place. She went to the fact something, went to the bathroom and came back into the office. And I said, who's that in the back of talking really, really loud? And she's like, um, you know, oh yeah, she's really, really loud. And, you know, the person in the background was like, it's a woman's voice. And he's like, oh, she, he, you know, he's crazy and this and that, well, that's crazy and such and such. And I talked about this before, how they love to do this, right? I also got the audio of it um, also, which I didn't have time to, um, to play uh, as I'm using my uh, headset with the mic to talk uh, on this. But, you know, if I, I get a chance, I'm going to upload it and do a short video about it. But again, this is what they're doing. And also she's like yawning in my ears all the time. So I'm, like, I'm so tired. I'm like, listen, I know you're always tired, but today was like extra. And I can always tell when it's extra, right? And it's because again, she's being manipulated, <laughs> right? So, you know, this is what's happening. And people, you know, don't want to believe these things, okay? Um, and, you know, but these things are, are all uh, talked about, written, and I talk about how they constantly use of police, right, and certain, at certain times to target me, okay? And which is, again, indirect threat, all right? So condition words, uh, the identification words or trigger words, and it says is to have a, a tactic that is sometimes used on a victim that the group doing the psychological harassment will start using a word different actions can also be used that is not commonly used to identify themselves and to identify themselves as part of this group so example the person in the back of talking about he's crazy or that's crazy or so you know again this is what this is what they continue to do right because again uh when they understand and they realize that you know, the more knowledge that i get on these things is the less of effect they have on me then they'll use the crazy term term right then whenever they manipulate Pat, because, you know, they, all, they she's the only one they can really manipulate to actually get me, you know, a little wild up. And I say a little, and I, again, it's because of my feeling towards her, you know, and so that's what they'll use. They're very good at, you know, emotional manipulation, okay? So because the word is not associated to a group that is psychologically attacking the victim, it becomes threatened in the sense that the victim identifies an enemy, can expect an attack, or threat and in this case sometimes i you know that will happen with pam where i will identify her as not say the enemy but as being used to psychologically attack me right or simply identify and associate the word to a group and repetitive attack and the result the word is conditioned to a threat the group but in this case the person is conditioned to a threat so pam is conditioned to uh, um it's like you know basically saying that um you know if if uh, you know, to leave her alone, to not get back together with her, stuff like that. If I do, then they'll use the cops there again, right? Or, you know, I'm crazy, right? Such and such. So, again, you know, the word is conditioned to a threat and the group and a possible coming attack. Now that the victim has been conditioned to associate a threat, the group and the attack to so an uncommon word or more common word is used that is conditioned and associated in the same way to the same threat, an enemy or a possible coming attack. The word itself can also be associated to a threat. It's not just a word, but it can do this with people, right? An indirect threat of physical violence, for example, or a degrading theme that is not recognized by the general public, which can increase the victim's threat response and then stabilize the victim further by confusing them and inducing more paranoia where the victim is wondering who is who, friend or for, and can leave them responding more to more possible attacks. So, for example, you know, like today, uh, like I said, with my my uh, nephew's son in the kitchen with the computer, I came in and turned on my computer. As soon as I turned on my computer, you know, they started with the with car honking, right? So, again, I guess, you know, again, trying to keep you and, and, and make you paranoid so that you don't use, you know, your computer, you don't use your phone. You know, again, these are, con these are things that have happened to me before and it's not working. Okay, I know that I know that they listen to my phone, listen to my conversation, and you know they can listen. That's all. You know, nothing I can do about that, right? But I'm not going to isolate myself to the point because basically they want to keep me a prisoner in my own bedroom, right? To to become self isolated and not have contact with anybody, right? So 
this is what they do, right? And <sighs> okay, so the condition word can become what some have termed a trigger word, where the victim explodes in rage or to or to the threat and physically attack an innocent and unaware person, making them the victim of physical violence and making them both victims of this tactic, strategy, and phenomenon. So this is what they do between me and Pam. So that's why I leave, okay? Because I, I know what it is that they want. So when they use her to, to attack me psychologically, they basically want some type of physical confrontation, uh, me act, uh, have acting physical towards her, the physical violence. So I just leave, all right? So, as I was saying, so now what are they doing now is that Pem has now become the the condition person, right? The, the not the trigger one, but she become the trigger person. So now with the use of the police, you know, sending subliminal message about you know being with Pam or next to Pam, what have you, or talking to Pam. Because after I got off the phone with her today, and this is happening all week when she's called me and I got off the phone with her, whether I call her and got the phone with her, immediately afterwards, you will hear police sirens. Okay. Now outside, you're hearing. I'm hearing all these sirens. The sirens. The, the police. I think I'm different with Pam. It was the first one. From the time I got up this morning, there have been no sirens, nothing, except for you know the car honking again when I turned on my computer, right? Because they're surveilling me in my own home, right? So as I got up the phone with Pam, you hear the police sirens, and from that time, okay, even even now, it's it's all have been police sirens and ambulances sirens that has been going off outside so again understanding what it is that they're doing this is how targeted individuals or targeted victims or ti are being uh conditioned in this coercive persuasion program and the effects that is being done to us is detrimental okay not just psychologically but with the use of direct energy weapons, the use of weapons for mind control, such as silent sound spread spectrum, it is psychologically, it is neurologically, okay? And also with the use of other types of direct energy weapons, such as the vibrational acoustic weapon, right? Which causes your body to vibrate, but physical, uh, right? Injury to the individual. And so now that I'm gonna put this video up again, this is what they do. You know, they'll again go back, uh, go back to their drawing board, come up with something else, uh, or usually the same thing, but it's, it's a repetition, right? So it's either uh, the threat of homelessness, uh, the threat of the psychological threat of being a label crazy, right? The, the threat of violence, you know, uh, the threat of, uh, of being arrested by the police, right? The threat of being institutionalized, okay? The threat of, um, you know, uh, they're like they'll send me some little message about if I talk to women that you know they're gonna kill me or you know I'll be arrested, right? So these are the the main proponents, the main threats that I usually receive over and over again because it's repetitive. So whenever you see these type of repetitive things happen in, in your life or with anybody else, it is because they're being conditioned. They're being uh, they are in a psychological uh, manipulation program or coercive program. Okay, and again, this is to cover up the direct energy. Uh, uh, the experimentation as well as the illegal microchipping, right? So illegal microchipping, microchipping uh, person using uh, two or for the purpose of remote neural monitoring. Okay, so I'm going to end the video at this point. Um, I don't want to make it too long. I got to get back to doing my um, homework, my studies, and uh, like I said, I need to take some of the focus off of them now because I really need to get catch up on my schoolwork. Because again, the noise campaign, constantly being awake in the middle of the night, uh, you know, the upstairs neighbor banging on the floor. You know, like I said this morning, someone uh, on the side uh, constantly um, uh, bouncing the basketball, right, over and over again, <laughs> okay? Um, it's just kind of ridiculous, you know? But um, this, is, this is what they do, okay? So I'll see you guys on the next video.